How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group. Mike here. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike. I am a pilot and I cover everything in aviation, pretty much everything. And today we're going to discuss an accident that happened early this year, just a few weeks ago in North Carolina. Uh, this was a fatal accident of a Beechcraft Baron. It's actually the same week around the same day or the same week where we had another crash of a PC-12 uh, there in North Carolina. I'm covering this because I have some connection to that airport, Davidson County Airport, uh, where the accident occurred. And I haven't been there in a while, but I've definitely flown in and out of that airport. So if you have been following the channel, some of you may recall or may have seen me fly in and out of this airport, Davidson County in Lexington, North Carolina. As a matter of fact, our dealership, Lookup Aviation, started at this airport where we still have a hangar there. And believe it or not, my airplane, the Mojo Sling, I took my very first flight. If you can go back, actually, maybe I'll pin it up here. If you go back and watch that video, my very first flight in the Mojo Sling where I went up a few times, I would say my, my first extended flight in that airplane um, was at this airport, same runway, runway six, runway two, four. Uh, so that's why like, I, when I heard about this crash, it, it sort of hit home because uh, I know the airport, I know the surrounding, and I may have actually ran into this pilot without knowing. So rest in peace to Mr. Ackley and uh, condolences to his family uh, and everyone who's connected to him. It's, it's always devastating when you read about another pilot crash, and especially in a new year. And also, you know, part of this, the main reason why I make these videos is mainly one, for educational purposes, and also actually full disclaimer is the fact that everything that I will share in this video, just my opinion, not facts. Make sure you fact check anything that you hear. This is mainly for discussion purposes. And I also tread with respect because as a pilot and knowing other pilots, we're all vulnerable to this. And so when a crash happens, it's an opportunity for all of us to learn, learn of what to do and what not to do. Okay, so let's get into it. The aircraft involved in this crash, a Beechcraft Baron, it's a light twin engine airplane, November 5, 8 Lima Foxtrot. And one fatality, which was the pilot involved here, he was 43 years old. And according to reports, and again, this is not a concluded report by the NTSB, these are just reports by eyewitnesses and partly radio communication. So this Beechcraft Baron took off on runway 24, according to the report facing the southeast. And an eyewitness said that when they saw the airplane took off on the climb, they saw smoke on the right engine of that airplane. And it was said that the airplane flew to about 300 feet above ground when they started to see that there were some mechanical problems there. Now, again, according to eyewitness, they saw also that the, uh, the uh, landing gear was retracted at one point, which would tell us the pilot was probably trying to land the airplane. And unfortunately, just a short minute or a few seconds later, the aircraft crashed into a tractor trailer uh, injuring two other people, the driver of the tractor and a passenger. Um, but it was also close to the highway, which may be a reference to perhaps the pilot was trying to land or crash land the airplane on the highway. Now I'm going to read some of what the eyewitnesses said on this report to you. Three witnesses who were on the airport ramp observed a portion of the takeoff roll rotation and initial climb before losing sight of the airplane just before impact. One of the witnesses who flew for a major airline reported that the right engine was spewing dense white smoke that the airport video did not accurately depict. And airport security footage also shows white smoke trailing the airplane about the time the airplane rotated and continued until the airplane went out of sight. Now it says a photograph taken by one of the witness when the airplane was seen near the intersection of a taxiway Alpha One depicted the airplane in a climb altitude or climb attitude with the landing gear extended and smoke trailing the right engine. Again, everything points to the right engine. So we know for a fact that something was up with at least one of the engine on the takeoff roll and takeoff. And it says about the time that the landing gear retracted, one of the witnesses noted white blue colored smoke trailing the left engine and the airplane was described as not having power. 
while another witness described the smoke trailing the left engine as white. The airplane banked to the left, stalled, pitched nose down, and disappeared behind terrain. So, again, looking at that, and then also, as far as weather is concerned, since it was low clouds, uh, had some clouds about 4,400 feet, so this is still, I guess, a bit higher than where the airplane was. It didn't go anywhere near the cloud. Um, and what I honestly imagine that more than likely this was a well-skilled pilot or well-rated pilot. Because um, if you're flying a multi-engine, likely you have your instrument rating as well. Um, so if say the weather was like pretty bad, which was not the case here, uh, the pilot must have been rated to fly in that type of weather. And then again, it was reported that the airplane climbed to about 300 feet above ground before you know all these problems were spotted. Now, given that initially they said they saw something wrong with the right engine, and then shortly after another witness saw something wrong with the left engine. As far as timestamp, the airplane took off around 1707. It's about five, Shortly after 5 p.m. that time of the year, it's likely late at night or probably the sun was setting. So again, I I tried to look at different things that could have contributed to something happening uh, with this crash. But when I look at the weather, also time it doesn't really play a big factor. Uh, the main thing that's being uh, reported here is mechanical problem. And this happens. Unfortunately, airplanes can have mechanical problem and it's always terrible, terrible timing if a problem happens during takeoff or during landing, what I call the deadly zone. But let's focus a bit on the aircraft itself, or particularly the, the category of the aircraft, which is a light piston engine, uh, twin engine airplane, Beechcraft Baron. Beechcraft Baron is one of the most successful twin engine airplane ever produced in general aviation. And by most successful, I mean, it's one of the most produced aircraft, twin engine aircraft that are still flying today. And a lot of people uh, geared towards that airplane. But unfortunately, uh, the, the Baron and several other uh, light twin in that category, they've had their share of fatal crashes. And so I wanted to use this opportunity, one, to, to talk about this particular crash, but also to share some, some knowledge, as far as I know, on twin engine airplanes. Now, given that my opinion is going to be a bit biased because I am a single engine, single piston engine pilot, um, I'm not a multi-engine or nor am I rated multi-engine, but I also have some knowledge about this category. When you think of a twin engine airplane, so let's try to go to, to that particular day where a pilot is taken off and you know perhaps if something happens with their engine chances are they're able to tell because their instrument is likely going to tell them that hey something is going on you know they might have some type of drop and oil pressure or, or any something there's going to be some type of indicator and also if it's a vfr flight if the pilot looks right or left they could probably see like hey something is up and again according to the one report said that the the landing gear was retracted uh, and then the landing gear came down again. Now, I'm not sure if the, the pilot pulled up the landing gear initially, because once you take off and you, you're on your climb, you close up your landing gear. Uh, but then another witness reported that they saw the landing gear come down, which to me is an indicator that perhaps the pilot was trying to uh, get the airplane down and hopefully crash landed. And I also should point out the fact that so many pilot uh, accident reports that I've read, and I, I try to go through some of this stuff uh, on and off, partly because as a pilot myself, it's it's educational. It's it's I hate reading crash and accident reports, but sometimes when you hear about something, you want to educate yourself as to what happens and also help build your habits to practice good habits. Almost every time when I read an accident report, the conclusion is pilot error. Unfortunately, pilots typically get blamed for something happening. But this was not the case here, at least in my opinion. Uh, clearly what happened was a mechanical failure, and what I imagined was the pilot trying their very best to mitigate their task and resolve whatever was going on. Now, when you're taken off, OK, 
okay? When you're taking off in any airplane, when you're taking off or coming in to land, there's just too many things working against you that it buys you very little time to be able to apply anything uh, to help your case. Now, there's been successful crash landings that's happened uh, where, you know, airplanes that suffer mechanical failure, the pilot is able to crash land it or, or put it down somewhere. But in this case, especially on takeoff, think about it. When you're taking off in any airplane, but more particularly a twin engine airplane, your that aircraft is operating at its maximum performance. Okay, maximum performance. All the power is in, your engines are rolling at the maximum power possible because you need all that energy to get you up and get you up to cruise altitude. And in the case of a twin, you're managing two engines. So if something happens with one engine, it means to mitigate that error or to mitigate what's just happened, it's more work on the pilot. And I hate to say it, but it's more difficult to keep a twin engine airplane stable compared to a single engine in the case of an emergency. It's just, it's just the fact. Because when you think of two engines that are attached to your wings, by the way, in a single pacing engine, you generally will have your engine or your power plant sitting in front of you or behind you. But in a twin, you have the engine sitting side to side. And when one engine stop doing this, Guess what? It's the load factor really, it changes significantly, which also means more work on the pilot. And especially for legacy airplanes or legacy engines, uh, the designs, again, puts more task on the pilot. So again, what I imagine was happening here was the pilot trying their very best to, to crash land the airplane. And unfortunately, they didn't make it. And it was reported that the airplane stalled which is another thing we should talk about. Stalls happen at any phase of flight, whether you're flying twin or single engine, you can stall an airplane, but it is inherently more dangerous when you stall a twin engine for some of the things that I've already mentioned. See, in a single engine plane, say for example, in a single engine, you get into a stall spin situation. Now let's assume that you have altitude as your friend, you're not as low to the ground. You go through your procedure pair, which is you, you pull the power off, uh, neutralize your aileron, opposite rudder, and then pitch elevator down to break the stall. That's your normal procedure for breaking out of a stall spin situation. To recover from a stall in the twin can pose more difficult. Now imagine that you're trying to recover from a stall at low altitude in a twin engine. It's you have so little time, so little time. And that's why the situation was so unfortunate because the pilot had everything working against him and he tried. And I remember reading about another barren crash that happened in Miami or Fort Lauderdale a while back. I don't know how many years or how recent that was. And when you see the footage of that crash, it's almost like the airplane just dropped out of the sky, just like a rock. And that's another thing you have to consider when you're flying a twin. You know, these planes are significantly heavier than say a standard single engine airplane. And if you were to lose power in a heavy plane, that weight is just gonna put you down. It's, it's that's just the fact. Aerodynamically, that's the fact. And so I want us to consider some of these things for those of us who are either looking to get into multi-engine or fly piston twin to be more particular because not all twins are the same piston twin engine aircraft in my biased opinion these are some of the most dangerous airplanes to fly period and they're dangerous for these reasons and I, I'm gonna talk more in detail in a different video where we focus on twin engine light twin engine airplanes because the myth is that when you have two engines you're safer. But statistically speaking, this has not been the case. It's almost the opposite that usually when you run into an emergency flying a twin, it's just a lot more difficult to resolve that situation compared to when you're flying a single piston engine airplane. But again, we'll save that for another video. So I just want to put that out there that when you're flying a twin engine, a piston twin engine aircraft, so these are some of the things that you need to put in the back of your mind that 
statistically, they're not safer. Again, my biased opinion, but the numbers show it, that they're not safer. And it will take more skill to fly these things. That's why you get your multi-engine rating. But also, they can be much more expensive to operate and maintain. But again, we'll save all of this for another video. But I really just wanted to report this accident. Um, and as more information comes out, we can talk more about it. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts on what happened or what you think happened? I think it's clear that it was mainly a mechanical failure and the pilot tried to mitigate and hopefully land that airplane safely and that did not happen. Again, rest in peace to the deceased pilot and condolences to their family. But I do wanna hear your opinion. Make sure you leave in the comments below. And if you're close to this or know more about the situation, please share it in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. Again, my name is Mike and stay tuned. Stay tuned for the next video because I want to do a follow up of my case against light twin engine airplanes. Okay, thank you all so much and I will catch you on the next video.